In this video, we're going to practice uh, graphing some piecewise functions, including some that are parabolas. Um, so let's start with number one. But for number one, we're just evaluating. So you just have to be careful when you're evaluating a piecewise function. Because we have more than one piece, you have to decide which one you're going to be dealing with. Um, you need to look no further than the domain here at the end. Um, because this little part at the end tells us that we'll use the top function if the x value is greater than 4. We'll use the bottom function if the x value is less than or equal to 4. So looking at this first problem, the x value is 7. So am I going to use the top function or the bottom function class? Top. I'm going to use the top function, all right? The x value is 7, which is greater than 4, which tells me we're going to do the top function. So if I substitute 7 in for x right here, then that means we have 3 times 7 minus 5. All right, so that's 21 minus 5. 16. So that's going to be 16. All right, any questions so far? OK, how about the next one? If we're dealing with 4 is our x value, am I going to use the top function or the bottom function this time? Um, let me call on somebody specific real quick. Okay, um, Malik. Am I get for if the x value is four? Am I going to wind up doing the top function or the bottom function? I think you're going to do the bottom. Uh, that's correct. Tell me why you chose that one. Because the equal to, all right? We're going to use the bottom function if the x value is less than or equal to four. And of course, it is equal to 4, so we're going to do the bottom function. So um, you, looking at the bottom function, that's x squared. So that means 4 squared. Oh, look, same answer, 16. OK, did I lose anyone just then? OK, last one. Um, now I'm dealing with an x value of negative 3. OK, Tim. Um, am I going to use the top function or the bottom function this time? Bottom. The bottom one, because negative 3 is less than 4, so we'll use the bottom function. So again, we're doing squared, so that means we're going to do negative 3 squared. So wait a minute, is this going to be positive 9 or negative 9? Positive 9, right? A negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be a positive 9. All right, so that's how we evaluate. Any questions? Okay, now for the graphing. Let me zoom in. All right, for problem number two, when I do my graphing this time, I'm going to try showing you how to do it using the calculator. All right? Um, previously, we've done it without the calculator. We're just going to mix it up a little bit. So first, let's do the top piece of this function. Okay? Now, focus on the little domain there where the x values are greater than 1. Focus on the number one, and let's start with that. Um, this is so simple, you really don't need a calculator, but let's just go through the motions anyway. Put this function into your calculator real quick, 2x plus 3. OK, so we have 2x plus 3. OK, now right here at the start, let's go ahead and use this domain number as our starting point. OK, so we're the cutoff value, the border point is 1. So we might as well tell it to start at 1. All right, so now we're looking at a table of values that we could use to graph with. Now, this says we want x values. Well, you know what? Let's start with that first value. Um, we have the point 1, 5. So let's go ahead and graph that point immediately, 1, 5. Okay. Um, as I plot this point, is it going to be an open circle or a closed circle? Open. Okay. What do you think, Ms. Medina? Open or closed? Open, she says. Okay. Um, 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 um. Caroline, how do I know? Why is it going to be an open circle? Um, let's, oh, let's look. Yeah, less than or greater than. See how. See how um, when uh, the one underneath has a little line under it? 
All right, that little or equal to line, that's when it's going to be a closed circle. Okay. If it doesn't have the or equal to, then that's when it's going to be open. Okay. okay. So this one's going to be an open circle. So what did I say? 1 comma 5. So let's go up to 1 comma 5 and put an open circle. Now, for the rest of the points, we want values that are greater than 1, x values that are greater than 1. So it's just a matter of which way I scroll on my calculator. So if I want values that are greater than 1, obviously I'm going to do like 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay? So um, next I have 2, comma 7, 3, comma 9. You get it. So here I'm going to go 2, comma 7 would be right here. 3, comma 9 would be right here. So that, uh, my points are just appearing. Hold on a second. Okay, so that shows you that the graph is going to be going like this. Okay. Okay, so that's the first piece of my piecewise function. Now I'm going to do the other piece in pink. So let's go ahead and put this function in our calculator, 3x minus 5. Okay, so 3x minus 5. Um, again, let's start out this one. So I have one comma negative two. Is this going to be an open circle or a closed circle this time? This time it's going to be a closed circle because it's got that less than or equal to one. So we're going to include this border point. Um, what did I say it was? One comma negative two. So let's put a closed circle at one comma negative two. Okay, so we got a closed circle right there. So for the rest of our points, we want values that are less than or equal to 1. So we're going to go to like 0, negative 1, you know, less than. So that means I'm going to scroll up on my calculator here. So, um, so 0, comma, negative 5 would be right here. And then negative 1 comma negative 8. Okay, so that's enough to show us that the graph is looking like this. And that's it. Alright, so that's another way to graph a piecewise function. Did I lose anyone just now? Any questions? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number three. So um, looking at the top function, which I'm going to graph in blue, I've got this x minus 5. Now this is so simple, we could definitely do this in our head, but I'm still going to use the calculator um, just to get used to the process. So x minus 5, and this time the domain starts at negative 1 is where the break is. So I'm going to tell it to start at negative 1. Okay, so at negative 1, I've got negative 6. Negative 1 comma negative 6. That's my first point. Um, Carly, is this going to be an open circle or a closed circle? Mm -hmm. A closed circle because it's less than or equal to, we're going to include it. So go to negative 1 comma negative 6 and we'll put our closed circle. So right here. Okay. Now I want values that are less than negative 1 also. So I'm going to scroll up from here to get lesser values. So negative 2 comma negative 7. Okay. So negative 2, negative 7. And you see the pattern. See how I'm just going down 1 over 1? So I don't really need to look back at my calculator. I can just continue to go down one over one from there very quickly. OK? Um, so there you go. That shows you that the graph is going this way. All right, any questions so far? Sir? All right, let's go ahead and do the second function now. 
which is uh, x squared. So I'm going to put x squared in my calculator real quick. Uh, even though, again, this is so simple, we could do it in our heads anyway. OK, I'm still letting it start at that negative 1 border point. So at negative 1, it's negative 1, comma 1. OK, is this going to be an open circle or a closed circle this time? It's going to be an open circle because it's got the greater than, it's not or equal to. So um, negative 1, comma 1 is going to be right here, open circle. So that's where you start. Now, from there, we want values that are greater than negative 1. So I'm just going to scroll down. Yes? So um, to when you're choosing like closed or open, you're not looking at any value, right? You're just looking at the sign. Correct. I'm okay. just looking at the symbol. If it's got the little equal to line under it, it'll be closed. If it doesn't, it'll be open. Okay. All right. So I'm going greater than. So I'm going to scroll down. So I'm, I see 0, comma 0, 1, comma 1. So there's 0, comma 0, 1, comma 1. OK, 2, 4, 3, 9. All right, so 2, comma 4, 3, comma 9. All right, and that's as much as will fit. But that's enough to see how the parabola goes. So it's going like this. Ah, I messed up. Uh, good enough. Okay, so there we've done it.